how do you like to measure writing progress? Um, do you tally word count, look at pages, assign a certain number of hours? I know Scalzi, who is a workhorse who gets things done, Scalzi, his plan used to be, he would, he said, I'll write for, uh, he goes, he starts in the morning and he writes for either a thousand words or four hours. And if he hits four hours first, then he stops. And if he writes a thousand words, then he stops. And that's good because that means he can have work-life balance and still do other professional things. And I know that if he's under deadline, he'll work more, but it's, you know, that's a pretty good strategy right there. But honestly, I don't worry so much about measuring my writing progress because I mean, what good does measuring my progress do? I just need to get work done. Do I have a pre-writing ritual, like getting a fresh cup of coffee or stretching? I've done various things in the past. I used to listen to a song sometimes just because it was about the right length that it would take for me to like, like make a cup of coffee and like, you know, get everything set up by my computer. Um, rituals can be comforting, but they can also be kind of a trap, like sudden then you're like oh no i don't have coffee so i can't write or oh no my perfect pen or oh no um i've got to wear pants because i'm in a coffee shop how can i write because i'm not having my no pants ritual what do you do to focus um i would recommend i mean first off this is the hardest part of doing anything exercise isn't hard doing exercise is hard like the emotional labor required for a relationship isn't hard. Doing it is hard, <laughs> you know? Um, uh, it was either, it was Kant, I think, that said, no, it is. I think it's Wit Wittgenstein said, man can do whatsoever he wishes, but he cannot wish what he wishes. Um, or it translates alternately as man can do whatsoever he wills, but he cannot will what he wills. Um, and it's the same. You know, I used to blow off my friends and classes and everything to sit down and write. And it's harder now. It's harder now, even though I have arguably more reason to do it, uh, partly because I also have a thousand other things in my life and kids besides. But also it's hard to sit down and do the thing that you feel like you kind of have to do. Um, um, but, the, you know, the secret is to sit down and do it um, or to remove things that keep you from doing it. You can set a specific writing time. You can, you know, go somewhere without Internet and write there because there's always a distraction whenever you're on the Internet. Um, you know, when I was working on and finishing book two, I went out and got an office with no internet in it. And, uh, well, technically it was a shitty old student rental with no internet in it. And then when I went in to write, I would take my phone and I would leave it outside the room on mute. And so there was, you know, it was just me and the computer and there were no games on it or anything. So it was write, you know, write or do nothing. Um, so, Removing the possibility for distraction actually can work really well. Um, and again, but ultimately, have you sat down to just write it? You know, have you just sat down to do it with the document open and just do it? I mean, that's how you do it. Uh, so here, somebody says, I love reading and writing, and I just want to start writing something long for the first time. Any advice um, to the today? Um, I think this it was intended to be to date. I have just written short stories, no more than three k words, and I feel kind of unsure about getting myself into something that requires such dedication. Thank you for everything. Now it could be that you are a natural short story writer. Every time I write something, I mean, I go onto my blog to say, "Here's a cool picture of some flowers and a planter I have." And instead, I write 800 words about my kids because everything turns into a story for me. And if I go in to tell a small story, it turns into a bigger story. Uh, but that's just sort of how I work. Um, so, you know, I, again, my advice would be if you want to try it, try it. Um, just make sure that the story you're trying to, you know, pick a story you want to tell 
with the knowledge that it will be a longer story. Now, should you immediately aim for a quarter million words? No. But it says, to date, you've just written short stories no more than, you know, 3,000 words. Maybe aim for, like, a little novelette. Aim for, like, 12 or 15. To, you know, a longer story. Uh, I think Slow Regard was something like 20,000, 30,000. How do you write good, believable, non-cliche, clunky dialogue? With great care. <laughs> I mean, what would your number one piece of advice for writers... Uh, Number one piece of advice for first-time authors trying to break through. Now, break through, I don't know what you mean there. Are you? Do you mean break through into publishing or trying to break through into writing? Like, that's a big difference. When is your next plan? Good night, sleep. Uh, when I am dead. I'm thinking about joining a writing group. Have I ever been part of one? Yes. Any help? Fun? Eh, eh, eh. It can go back and forth. Generally speaking, if you can do an in-person writer's group and be safe from COVID, do that. Online writer's groups, I'm very skeptical of. And certainly don't just take something you love that you wrote and throw it onto some online forum. Because that's just, you know, that's just asking for people to abuse you. Where do you get your inspiration from? Pass. It's just, it's a fair question, but it's unanswerable. I mean, sometimes when we set up uh, some random guy, sometimes when we set these up ahead of time, we do um, let people submit questions early, but I set this one up just a couple of hours ago. So any advice for realizing identifying an error in your story isn't going to work out so as not to get stuck trying to ram the idea into the story? Nope, nobody knows. Um, the idea itself usually isn't the problem. I mean, usually. The problem is the execution. The secret is to not get too hung up on it when you're drafting so that you don't waste a lot of time trying to fix the unfixable. You do your best. And then you reread it. And then if you look at it and you're like, nope, there's no way this is going to work. Then you skip it. Or when you show it to a beta reader, your beta reader will get back to you and say, I didn't like this or this seemed weird or boy, you're racist. And then you fucking change things because you got to listen to your beta readers. There's no simple answer to that one. And if I had a simple one, I could sell it to people for a million dollars. Would you try to would you change your style to try to find a publisher if you can't score a deal? by your sixth or 10th try. Oh, now here's the thing. Getting rejected 10 times is not a lot. So the answer to that is no. I got, uh, Name of the Wind got rejected at least 20, 30 times. Admittedly, it wasn't very good. The beginning is the roughest part and it was way rougher back then. Um, I wrote a middle grade novel and have been rejected by just under 150 agents. My query letter started getting me full requests after the last update. So I know the problem is with the book. Any tips for revising a work that's been sitting for a while to make it the best it can be? Uh, oh, you asked two questions there, so I'm going to skip the second one. Tips for revisiting a work that's been sitting for a while? You've already done part of it. I mean, here's the thing. If you've been submitting this, if it's been rejected 150 times, I hope the only thing, I hope you haven't just been trying to submit it. I hope you've also been revising it. Um, because you got to revise it. If you haven't been revising it, well, then you've had a break. You need to go back and read it again with a red pen in your hand and think about it and do something, you know, time away from your manuscript gives you the opportunity to really dig in, um, and, and see it with fresh eyes. That's what revision actually means. What's your go-to take a break activity? I don't know what that means. I, I, I'm saying that literally and figuratively. I don't know what your question specifically means, but also I don't know what it means to take a break. Um, I feel like I've kind of been working at a dead sprint on too many things for about, a, about 10 years now.